two pairs of Puma Ultra 1.3. Completely identical boots, right? Well, wrong, actually. This one is the men's fit and this is the women's fit. Both identical in technology terms. However, they have a different fit and they have a different sole plate. So today we're gonna break it down and look at what the differences are and which one maybe you should pick up. Because this isn't really about men's fit versus women's fit as far as I'm concerned. This is about getting one fantastic boot in two different fits and deciding which one is best for you. I'll leave a link for a Boot Wizard approved retailer if you wanna buy the Puma Ultra down in the top pin comment. Please do remember to get subscribed to the channel and of course, hit that like button and comment down below which one of these two you would go for. Let's get into it. Which one would I go for? Before we do jump into the fit, let's check out the tooling because it is different between the two boots. So you get the standard ultra tooling on the men's variation and then on the women's variation, you get this sole plate with the more conical studs. Now this you might recognize because this is actually the sole plate of the Puma King Platinum. In my opinion, both very good sole plates, but clearly quite different. The men's version of the Ultra having these hyper aggressive chevron bladed style studs throughout the whole boot. And in terms of the sole plate itself, fairly stiff and stable through the midfoot with a little bit of flex and then a decent amount of spring back in the forefoot here. This is more of a classic speed boot style outsole. On the women's variation, you actually still get a good amount of spring back and it's very comparable. I wouldn't be, I'd be struggling to tell the difference between between the two and I actually think you get more stiffness and rigidity through the midfoot and the heel of the boot which you might not be expecting from a sole plate that is less aggressive in terms of its stud pattern which is exactly what it is this is pretty much conical studs all the way around this gives you a much nicer range of rotational movement when compared to the men's ultra now which one is better is a really hard thing to say because this is definitely more aggressive and if that's what you're looking for, which it very much might be considering you're buying a speed boot, then it's the way to go. The conical one is going to please a lot of people. A speed boot of this style or a lightweight boot with a barefoot touch with a conical stud pattern is actually going to be very well received, I think. However, I'm not entirely sure why there is a huge difference or why they have decided to make two boots with two different sole plates, men's versus women's. I'm not aware of any kind of kinetic movement styles that would mean that women would be more inclined to go for a conical stud plate or why it would be better for them or more beneficial. If you do know, then drop it down in the comments and let me know. Now, with the sole plate being changed, one of the big things that we do have to consider is the weight. So if we take a look at the weight, we're gonna throw these both on the scales. They're both in a US 8 and the men's version comes in at 152 grams. Hella light. But the women's one, when we pop this onto the scales, 176 grams. Now that's still an incredibly light football boot, but the, that's a big jump in weight as well. And it shows how much of a difference the sole plate can make to the weight of a football boot. It's come off the King Platinum, which is fairly light, but it is a leather boot, so weight is not the biggest issue. They've slapped it on this and essentially removed the Ultra of one of its key selling points that it is so unbelievably light. So realistically, if you want the lightest possible option, it has to be the Men's Ultra because that is a huge difference. And considering what I said before about feeling like it's not really necessary to switch the women's to a conical plate, although I don't think it's a bad thing, the extra weight that it's added might put a few people off. If you wanna see a full breakdown of all the tech elements of the Puma Ultra, then do please click above my head and go through to my full tech spec review that I put up recently, because here we're just gonna focus on the differences in the fit between the two boots. So what do Puma say the actual differences are in the fit? Well, Puma say there is a narrower heel, a sculpted instep and a lower arch on this Puma Ultra Women's. Now, when you put them on feet, 
Can you tell there's a difference? You absolutely can. There is a noticeable difference between these two when you put them on feet and you can absolutely tell which is which when you swap between boots. So the question is, which one is better? Well, that's gonna be entirely dependent on your foot type. And I've said before, and I'll say it multiple times, the most important thing about your football boots is going to be the way they fit. There's nothing is more important than that when it comes to your performance because you're going to feel more comfortable you're going to play better because you feel better in your boots it's not about really anything else fit should be your primary concern so having two different fits in the same boot is really awesome for me i'll tell you straight out the men's fit fits me better but why is that? And a lot of it comes down to the midfoot. Having that different shape in the men's where the arch isn't quite as low, it's also not quite as sculpted, actually means that the whole boot shapes around my foot so much better. I raved and said how amazing the fact that it was very much one-to-one -one and painted on the midfoot of this boot was in my regular review. And I find that you lose that somewhat when you put me in the women's fit boot. But if you do have maybe a narrower foot or a foot that does have maybe a higher arch, this could work out really, really nicely for you. But for me, with what I consider to be a reasonably standard men's fit foot, I get a much nicer, much snugger fit across the midfoot in the men's compared to the women's. Next up is the heel. And if we look at the back of both boots, it looks clearly to me like the women's actually has a wider heel. But when you put them on, the shape and the way the whole thing has been sculpted means that it very clearly has a tighter heel that grabs onto your foot a little bit more. Now, again, for me, the ultra men's fit is a little more comfortable, but I actually feel like I'm a little bit more locked in to the women's, and if I could just get it to break in a tiny bit, it would probably stretch out just that little bit more, and it would be a fantastic heel fit in the women's. So I'm kind of 50-50 on that one as to which one I would prefer to go for, but again, put them both on feet, there is a definitive difference that this one is definitely slimmer and definitely grabs onto your heel and a much narrower position when compared to the men's boot. The fit and feel across the top of the boot pretty much remains the same across both if you ask me. And then in the toe box, oddly, despite the fact that the women's boot is supposed to be overall that little bit slimmer, I actually find that I think I have a little bit more room in the toe box of this women's fit boot. Now, some of that is gonna be down to the sole plate, or in this instance, I think all of that is down to the sole plate and the fact that it is a little bit wider here. Whereas on the men's, it just seems to taper in a little bit more and that shape is just a little bit different. So if we pull those over side by side, I just feel like I have a little bit more width in the women's one in the toe box, which isn't something that I necessarily want. And it maybe is just that little bit more noticeable because of the way that the midfoot fits. Either way, it's pretty minor in terms of its detail and don't think it's gonna make a huge difference. I did mention earlier that it seems strange that both boots had different sole plates, especially considering the weight. One of the reasons for that could be to get a different shape using the sole plate from that Puma King Platinum. But for me, the, the heel area in this particular sole plate on the women's variation does seem to be a little bit wider and even through the midfoot, it doesn't really seem to be significantly narrower. But maybe there's something about this particular sole plate and the way it works that's allowed Puma to be able to build the upper differently and really get that shape that they want to appeal to the women's fit. Everything else remains the same, but remember if you are buying the women's fit in the US, you will have to buy using women's US sizing. So go up a size and a half from what you would normally be. So technically these are a US 8 and these are a US 9.5. Just to confuse everybody, just to make sure that you get the right size. But to answer my own question, which one is better? And the answer is quite simply the one that fits your foot best. For me, that is the men's variation, but it is a really welcome addition to have that women's fit variation because so often we've got a women's fit boot and there's actually been nothing different about it. It's just been women's because they've painted it pink or purple or something like this. And 
I always found that super amusing because if you look at the men's players, they're more likely to go for a pink boot and the women's players tend to steer clear of those pink and purple boots in my experience. This is a genuine women's fit boot. This can absolutely not be a bad thing. And of course you do get that slight difference in the color on the back, speaking of color but that's pretty much the only visual difference between these two boots. A huge step forward, a really fantastic boot, and I would strongly recommend that if you do have maybe that narrower foot, higher arch, something like that, give the women's fit a go. You never know, you might like it. And alternatively, if you just want a conical sole plate on a Puma Ultra, this is definitely well worth considering. But you do have to be aware that you're gonna pay the price of that extra weight, although in price terms, they are both the same 200 euros, which for a top end boot is pretty reasonable these days. I say that because 200 euros is still a lot of money, isn't it? Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments. Was it worth releasing men's and women's fit? Is this something you'd like to see more of? Get subscribed to the channel, like the video. And of course, if you do want to pick up a pair, then do hit the link down in the top pinned comment. That'll send you through to a Boot Wizard approved retailer. Thanks for watching today. It's been appreciated. We will see you very soon.